Hello folks, Tony Morris here. Uh, I'll be your professor this semester in um, your English 3130 Intro to Creative Writing class. Um, I look forward to working with you all this semester. Uh, I love teaching creative writing. I got into creative writing myself uh, rather circuitously. I um, started college as a non-traditional student and um, uh, at 33 years old um, and had a wonderful composition teacher who came to me and uh, encouraged me to continue writing, which I did, and uh, went on to get a bachelor's degree in English with a minor in um, communication and journalism. Uh, I was interested in journalism too. I got introduced to journalism as a freshman uh, and then um, ended up uh, after working in an internship at NBC, being offered a job at NBC in my senior year. That's also the time when I discovered poetry and started writing poetry. Um, I was encouraged by the creative writing teacher at University of North Carolina, Charlotte to pursue my um, poetic interests. And so I decided to stay on uh, for two more years to get my master's degree in English um, and did so. Uh, and by that time I had uh, completed a, a a short book of poems um, that were later published and won an award in North Carolina. Um, and that encouraged me then to apply for PhD programs in creative writing. Um, and I got into Florida State and um, Southern Miss decided to attend Florida State University to get my PhD in English with a concentration in creative writing. Uh, once I graduated, I um, uh, received a job offer uh, first uh, in North Carolina uh, at Gardner-Webb University and then uh, here at um, Georgia Southern, which is called Armstrong at the time, at the Savannah campus. And um, so I came down here and uh, started teaching journalism and creative writing and then moved into uh, creative writing full-time, teaching it. Uh, since then, I've published uh, four books of poetry. My first book uh, is called Back to Cain. Um, my last poetry book is called Pulling at a Thread. Uh, in 2020, I published my first novel, uh, Deep River Blues, uh, and um, they've been successful, and uh, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, and I've been teaching here since 2004 and love it. I uh, love teaching young people the um, craft of creative writing. I do look at creative writing as a craft, mostly. Um, uh, you know, our uh, inspiration for poems and stories, um, they probably make up somewhere between 5% uh, uh, and 10% and of, um, of the um, uh, necessary skill and talent one needs to write great stories or write great poems or creative nonfiction. Uh, mostly what we're learning is the craft of writing, the craft of creative writing um, in, this, uh, in this program. Um, so one of the things I want to encourage you to do is to read deeply uh, of creative works. Uh, try to learn from what other great writers who have come before you uh, can teach you. Um, you know, in poetry, you might want to read people like Robert Frost or Langston Hughes or T.S. Eliot. Uh, maybe dig into E.E. E. Cummings um, or Emily Dickinson. Uh, read some Sil Sylvia Plath, um, confessional poet known for intense emotional and raw works. Um, you might read Maya Angelou uh, or Allen Ginsberg, or maybe Gwendolyn Brooks, the first African-American to win a Pulitzer Prize. Um, her poetry explores racial and social issues. Um, uh, Wallace Stevens. Uh, and then, you know, in fiction, you want to, you know, delve into people like uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald or um, Ernest Hemingway or William, William Faulkner, um, uh, John Steinbeck, Philip Roth, uh, Flannery O'Connor, um, Gabriel Garcia, Garcia Marquez, uh, those are all classically um, understood to be uh, some of the greats, and there are many, many more. So uh, keep your uh, mind open and, and read deeply, and uh, read as a writer, meaning look for those areas of craft that these writers are using to um, make their works stand out. Um, considered, um, these people are considered in many ways geniuses in their area. 
Um, so, you know, I come of, uh, into this, um, into this, um, study, uh, as I said, not from, uh, I was a, I was a non-traditional student. I was 33 years old. I'd already worked in factories and many other jobs before I came into the university. And so I realized that I had a lot of catching up to do in some ways. I wanted to, um, show that, um, um, uh, that I was knowledgeable in my area of study, and therefore I wanted to study the greats and 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 know who they were and be able to talk about them in a in an intelligent way. Um, so, anyhow, uh, you know this course is made up of um, uh, of, of of lots of discussion uh, posts, um, uh, assignments, of course, um, that you're giving almost almost weekly. Um, you want to share those uh, assignments with others and uh, and talk to others in the class about uh, what you see as their as their contribution to uh, um, the particular area of study uh, that we're focusing on for that week. And um, make sure you, uh, when you, as you study the chapters in the book, um, you pay particular attention to the key words. Um, most of the quizzes will be specifically on the key words. So it's important to know those. Um, and, uh, and also as you're, as you're reading through the text, uh, and, and by the way, if you, if you haven't gotten the text yet, um, uh, the university should have them available now. Apparently, um, something happened in the administration of the, uh, ordering of the text and, um, they had applied, um, those texts to, uh, another intro to creative writing class. So I corrected that last week, uh, Thursday or Friday, uh, got in touch with the bookstore because I was, um, getting messages from you folks, letting me know it's hard to find them. Uh, so they should be available now at the bookstore. Um, and you can use earlier versions. That's fine. Uh, as long as, you know, look at the topic for each week. And then, um, usually the heading is the same as a heading for the chapter. Uh, so just look for those, uh, heading, chapter headings and, uh, and you'll be able to follow along. So, um, so yeah, study the textbooks, study, um, what that, what, I mean, <laughs> in an online course, that is one of your main areas of learning. Uh, I will, uh, be posting, uh, videos like this, uh, as we go through the semester, um, uh, and they will be helpful. Um, but I think, just as helpful or maybe more helpful is what you're going to learn from the books and doing the exercises and, uh, and learning how to, um, use the terms that you learn, uh, as a professional yourself. One of the things that I'd like for you to, to be able to do by the time you finish this course is to be able to talk about creative writing intelligently using, um, uh, the terminology, uh, um, the vernacular, uh, that is used in the profession. So, very briefly, I want to talk to you about uh, imagery or images and how important they are. That's um, uh, the first chapter um, of uh, of our of our book uh, is about imagery, and I think it's appropriate that they put it as the first chapter because imagery is really what we're trying to um, create in the readers of in the reader's mind. You know. Imagination, imagery, and imagination, the root of imagery, right, is image and imagination, the same. So um, when we're writing, that's what we're playing with, is the imagination in the mind. So how do we create pictures in the mind? It's, it's kind of an interesting thing because we're using symbols, lines on a paper um, that make words, and words are another form of symbols. Uh, and when we speak them out loud, that's another form, a, a symbol, right? It's just a sound, um, and, and the sound carries meaning, though. Uh, it's like the words on the page carry meaning. Um, and so we're trying, though, to turn those words into images. Um, and how do we do that? Well, we try to stay away from, um, when we're writing and creative writing, we try to stay away from abstract words, um, uh, you know, abstractions or words or ideas that cannot themselves be experienced directly through one or more of the senses, 
uh, what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you feel, right? Those are uh, concrete um, uh, experiences that you have. Uh, abstract uh, words are words like, and, and ideas are words and ideas like love. We all know there's such a thing as love, or probably we all know that. I hope we know that. Um, but how do we experience that? We experience love through our physical reaction to it. Um, the quickening of the heartbeat, the flushing of the face, um, uh, the alertness that we have, uh, the smells of the one or the thing that we love. Because, you know, um, I love the smell, for example, of certain flowers. Um, that's a sense perception on my part, a sensory or sensual perception on my part. So, but abstractions cannot be felt. Uh, another abstraction would be truth um, or beauty, right? So when we're writing, especially, you know, we start with poetry in this class and um, as far as your first assignment goes, your first big assignment is gonna be a poem. Um, in poetry, we are trying to communicate to people through their senses, particularly. Also in fiction and creative nonfiction. That's why we start with poetry. Poetry is the beginning of all creative writing. Um, Homer's The Iliad and the Odyssey is uh, really considered the first Western piece of literature. And it's a long epic poem. Uh, and for its centuries, really millennia, that's how we communicated, it was through uh, poetry and, and, and then later on in plays. And um, so, so in poetry, we're using the senses to put across an idea. Um, to do that, we talk about actual concrete actions, concrete things, and what are happening to those concrete things, the actions that are happening in them. And that's what poems are. Uh, we wanna stay away from generalizations, you know. Uh, generalizations can only vaguely be visualized. Um, you know, like uh, uh, a generalization is uh, the word creatures or kitchen equipment, or um, uh, if we use the word something, right? Something, that thing, those are generalizations. So instead, of saying creatures, we may want to list uh, several creatures, or we may want to describe the equipment that's in the kitchen. That would be specification. Uh, so that's very important when it comes to imagery and creating imagery. Um, we also want to stay away from judgments. In other words, saying this is a good thing or this is a bad thing. Um, you know, too often um, we're trying to tell our readers when we're just starting writing how to think about something, you know? This is a beautiful object that I love. Um, okay, so now we're just using abstractions, generalizations, and judgments, which really doesn't tell the reader much, except maybe kind of in a general way what you feel, but it doesn't let me love something, right? And writing poetry, or in telling a story, we want to pull the reader into the story or the poem. We want to make them a part of that action that's going on in the story or the poem or the creative nonfiction piece. We want them actually to be there with us. Uh, those of you who love reading know that already instinctively, that the reason you love to read is because you are there with the people in the story, with the characters in the story. You are on the journey with them. You are part of what they are living through. Uh, and in many ways, we often pick certain characters in a story, we pick them out and we identify with them particularly. And uh, in that way, their actions, their speech um, become our action in our speech. And, uh, and it creates an image in our mind that we can actually participate in. And, uh, and because of that, we, there are actual physical uh, changes to our body, to our own biology that happen as we read a book 
or a, sto or a story or a good poem. Um, so you want to stick with the concrete images. Uh, concrete uh, is something that can be seen or heard or smelled or tasted or touched, like I said before. So, um, for example, let me pull something up for you here. Uh, one of my favorite uh, poems is by Walt Whitman, um, Song of Myself. So give me just a second here. Song of Myself is a poem that is um, uh, written in 1855, originally published in 1855, and it was republished several times up into 1895. So uh, just a little over 100 years ago was the last time it was published. But it speaks to Whitman's idea of, um, of poetry and and his idea of what it is to be an American. Uh, this, and, and in 1855, remember the country was barely 60 years old. I mean, um, the constitution was finally ratified in uh, 1792, I believe, 1791 or 1792. So about 50 years or so after that, Whitman's writing Song of Myself as a way to communicate the beauty of and the uh, capacity for an American to actually participate in the arts. So let me read just a little passage of this here. I celebrate myself and seeing myself and what I assume you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. My tongue, my every atom, from my blood, formed from this soil, this air, born here of parents, born here from parents the same and their parents the same. I, now 37 years old in perfect health, begin hoping to cease not until death. I'm gonna skip down here a little bit. Rooms and houses are full of perfumes. The shelves are crowded with perfumes. I breathe the fragrance myself and know it and like it. The distillation would intoxicate me also, but I shall not let it. The atmosphere is not a perfume. It has no taste of the distillation. It is odorless. It is for my breath and mouth forever. I am in love with it. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked. I am mad for it to be in contact with me. The smoke of my own breath echoes, ripples, buzzed whispers, Love root, silk thread, crotch and vine, my respiration and inspiration, the beating of my heart, the passing of blood and air through my lungs, the sniff of green leaves and dry leaves and of the shore and the dark colored blood of the air through my lungs. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So you see how much of what's in that poem is concrete imagery, speaking of the body, speaking of nature outside, speaking of the interchange between the body and nature. It's an absolutely gorgeous poem, and uh, it's, it's not short, it's long, uh, but it's, again, it's Whitman trying to capture all of what is, to him, America. It's well worth the reading and rereading. Here's something you'll find out about great works of literature, whether it's a poem or a story or a creative nonfiction. They ask us, in the reading of them, to come back and read them again. They're not easy. Like any almost sacred text, if you think about the Quran or the Bible or the Bhagavad Gita, these are all texts that are meant to be read and reread and reread, to be studied again and again, because what they're saying is so deep, so concrete, so real to us that we realize that we can't get it all in one reading. And we have to go back again and read it again. So, read deeply. Read deeply. And especially with poetry, read more than once. <laughs> and you'll, you'll probably get some of what it's trying to say. So images are all also um, significant. You want specific Images that also suggest uh, an abstraction or a generalization or a judgment, okay? So instead of telling us that um, the sky is beautiful, you may want to describe the azure 
blue sky with wisps of clouds raking through the air quickly and with force. Right, now you're showing us, but it also gives us a feeling of the power, the speed, and the beauty of that scene. Um, make sure you use detail. Uh, the degree of focus and specificity is what the detail is, <clears throat> how deeply you want to go into it. Um, and then don't forget about your figures of speech, metaphor and illusion, uh, simile, very important to use metaphor and simile in your writing. Um, also, you know, you can use personification, hyperbole, oxymorons as links to contradictory words. Uh, puns are also fun. So I hope uh, I've helped you to learn a little bit more about what we're looking for when it comes to imagery in the class. Uh, take the time to um, seriously consider the exercises and don't be in a rush. It's okay, this is a fun class and I'm basically going to be grading you not on how well a poetry, a poem is written by you or a story, but how much you're trying to apply these skills to your writing as you go through. Um, thanks again for joining me on, uh, on this journey, uh, hopefully of some discovery. Hopefully um, you'll find something out about the world of creative writing that you didn't know before and you'll be able to apply that in your lives and it will help you to have a more fulfilling and uh, whole experience as you go through the world and keep learning. Thanks for joining me.